Welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel. I am Gold Pony. I do car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the new 2020 Honda Fit courtesy of Apple Honda in York PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so I am in this one today because I've actually reviewed the Fit the past couple of years and I always enjoy it. It's a fun little car. So yet I am back at it once again, not to mention it's well above average reliability rating by Consumer Reports, which by the way is the very highest reliability rating given by Consumer Reports. So it's got that going for it. And most importantly for the 2020 model year, this very well made be the final fit for America at least it's still going to continue in Japan of course but rumor has it that that 2021 model year fit will not be coming to the US so now may be the very last time you have the chance to purchase a new Honda fit so what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be a few different trim levels for the 2020 Honda Fit. First one being the LX starting at $16,190. Then you have the Sport for $17,600, EX for $19,060. And lastly, the EXL, which actually is the one we have today, starting at $20,620. And so regardless of trim level though, power plant in this little guy is going to be the same. Powering this one is going to be a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder, putting out 130 horsepower at 6,600 RPM for the manual, 128 horsepower for the CVT that we have today, and 113 pound feet of torque sent to the front wheels through again your choice of either a six speed manual, which actually comes standard on the LX and the Sport trim levels, or a CVT, which is gonna come standard on the EX and EXL, but it is optional actually for the LX and the Sport trim levels. If you wanted to get it and i do believe that goes for an additional eight hundred dollars if you wanted to go that route and you get cool little silver paddle shifters with it too and we do have those today so you guys know we will be testing those out in a little bit here but zero to 60 time is actually kind of impressive for the size of the car zero to 60 comes in at 8.2 seconds and i say it's kind of impressive because for comparison's sake if you look at the toyota yaris the competition that comes in at 10.2 seconds so a full two seconds quicker to 60 in the honda fit that's substantial and all in all, MPG numbers come in at 29 in the city, 36 highway for the manual, 31 city, but still 36 on the highway for the CVT. Either way, of course, taking regular unleaded fuel, AKA 87 octane. And so before we do that paddle shifter test or any kind of fun accelerations in this new fit, did want to mention there are a couple different driving modes. There's one where you just simply slide the shifter all the way to the back and that is going to be a sport driving mode. It did immediately downshift for me, but it is also going to give me control over the shifting. So like I mentioned, we have paddle shifters here. So it is going to tell me what gear I'm in up here on the gauges and it's not actually going to shift for me. So that is pretty cool. Although it is a CVT, so it's kind of simulated shifts, but it's still definitely definitely cool that it's there though. But so then the other driving mode I wanted to mention, there is an econ button located just by the driver's left knee. That is something I used quite often when I have my Honda Civics commuting to work on my long drives on the highway. And the best part about that is those MPG numbers that I just gave you guys, they will substantially actually increase with that econ button. Essentially what that is going to do is limit climate control. So it's going to dial back the AC on hot days and it's also gonna limit throttle sensitivity as well. So when you put those together, it is actually going to boost those MPG numbers. I found myself getting back in the day in the Civic at least quite more than what the highway number was supposed to be getting. Did want to mention that that is an option, but I think you guys know what we have to do next. Let me go ahead and get set up here. Let's do a quick little paddle shifter test. Let's see how quickly they are going to react for us. Again, we're in a CVT, so it's a, it is what it is, but still want to test them out for you guys though. All right, so again, you guys for manual shift mode, I'm going to slide the shifter all the way to the back. It's going to give me that sport driving mode. I'm going to hit a paddle shifter. That's going to put me in a gear right now. I am in fourth. Let's downshift. Let's come to a complete stop. We're in first and five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. All right. Paddle shifters definitely react quite quickly. Again, take it for what it is because we are in a CVT, but they do react very quickly. So that's a good thing. And if anything, if you didn't want to play around with them, at least they're there for some engine braking. If it were to snow, like it often does here in Pennsylvania, you have that so that you don't go hitting the brakes when you're going down a hill like we currently are. And so you don't slide off the road. So engine braking is always a good thing for that reason, but paddle shifters do react quickly. And I do like that they're there 
on the Honda Fit here. But let's now give control back to the Honda Fit. What I'm going to do is simply just slide it back up into that drive mode here. And let's actually do a quick little acceleration. You can do it in the sport mode, but I'm just going to put it in that drive mode. Let's do a quick little acceleration here. Let's see how quickly we can get the new 2020 Honda Fit here up to speed. Here we go. It's not bad. It's pretty much as expected for the Honda Fit. It's not going to be the quickest thing in the world, but that is to be expected again. It's going to be quicker than the Toyota Yaris. You got to give it that. But again, if you want quicker, go with the Honda Civic Si or Honda Civic Type R for that matter. But it'll get the job done. This is more of a city car anyways. But so anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 10.3 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 7.9 inch rear drum brakes. And that's a pretty standard setup for a subcompact car like the Fit. But nonetheless, braking distance comes in at 126 feet, which eh, it's not the best, but Toyota Yaris comes in at 124 feet. So again, it's kind of expected for the segment, I should say. So it is right on point. It's not gonna be the quickest stopping power out there, of course. Again, it's pretty average in this segment, but touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, torsion beam rear suspension with a 25.4 millimeter front stabilizer bar. And as far as ride quality goes, it feels fine. It feels as expected once again. You're certainly gonna feel more of the road's imperfections in a car like this so it's not going to be the smoothest ride but again it's as expected it's right on point for the segment as far as cabin noise goes that is definitely more on the pronounced side i guess you could say just because the engine is going to be a little bit louder especially when you hit the gas let me hit it for you guys here definitely makes a louder sound and i feel like i have to talk a little bit louder when i do hit the gas but again it's not a horrible thing if that's the extent of the cabin noise that I have to deal with, that's definitely not gonna bother me too much because engine noise is something I never really minded. I kinda like it personally, but as far as steering feel goes, I actually kinda like it. It's not the heaviest feel in the world, so it could be a little bit more sporty. If you want a little sportier of a steering feel, there are options by Mazda or perhaps the Yaris, I guess, because Mazda kinda made that one. But nonetheless, it is kinda fun. It does kinda feel like a go-kart. I would imagine you would have a ton of fun zipping this thing around in the city, so definitely no issues for me there. Touching a visibility, that is 100% on point. I can see perfectly fine without a doubt out the back of this thing. And it is a super small car as well, so really you shouldn't have any issues whatsoever with visibility. And perhaps my favorite part about visibility coming standard for the EX and the EXL trim level, it's called Honda Lane Watch. And so essentially what that is, is when you put your right turn signal on, if you put your left turn signal on, I guess Honda felt like you didn't need it, but if you put your right turn signal on, there is going to be a camera on that passenger side mirror there, and that is going to display what is in your blind spot up on this infotainment screen. So of course it's gonna better help you not turn into somebody next to you. So I absolutely love that. That is a Honda specific feature so well done honda for that i gotta give you credit there but that about rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this brand new 2020 honda fit all right here she is you guys the possibly final fit for the us let's go ahead and start up front on this one to the sides multi-reflector halogen headlights will come standard across the board for all trim levels they will of course come with the automatic feature meaning when it starts to get dark out at night they will turn on automatically for you there so you don't have to worry about that and they will come with daytime running lights as well just below those fog lights that you're currently looking at they will come with the sport trim level and up so therefore we do have them today and if you went with that sport trim level you will find a red accent stripe on the lower front lip kind of distinguishing itself that is a little bit sportier than the other trim levels there and an added front lip I should say giving it a little bit lower of an appearance up front again only with that sport trim level so that is going to be there for you but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the fit here and so black window surrounds of course coming standard body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trim levels they will actually be heated with integrated turn signals if you were to go with the EXL that we do have here today Taking a look down at the wheel setup, here are 15 inch wheels with covers for the LX trim level, 16 inch multi-spoke black alloy wheels for the Sport, and 16 inch machined finished alloy wheels for the EX and EXL. That of course is what you're looking at right now then. But then make your way to the back, you will find a matte black antenna found on the roof up top there. Just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper of course. Trim level badging can be found for the Sport trim level only 
only. So all other trim levels, you will not find trim level badging. It will just be simply blank on that rear lift gate, minus the Fit logo on the left side, of course. But then just below it all, the Sport really gives you the best setup when it comes to the back, I will say. You will get a gloss black rear diffuser with a red stripe when it comes to the Sport trim level. So that rear diffuser is pretty darn cool looking. And there is a single exhaust outlet for all trim levels. However, it is tucked away for all trim levels, but the Sport. Sport is actually gonna give you an exposed exhaust outlet with a chrome tip. But again, that is not the one we have today. So do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back when it comes to opening the rear hatch of the honda fit there is a button on the key fob to unlock it if you want simply use that or you can just press the unlock button either way is perfectly fine and of course it is a manual lift gate so simply just lift up in the back there and that is how you're going to go ahead and open it up but once opened up cargo capacity is going to come in at 16.6 cubic feet if that was not enough space, there's rear seats do fold down. There is a 60-40 split, bumping that up to 52.7 cubic feet. And since we are back there, there is a cargo area light for all trim levels back there as well. And some cargo area tie-down anchors for the EX and EXL. Was very surprised to see those. Usually you'll find those on SUVs, higher priced SUVs, but... Not all the time on a car like the fit, so that is pretty cool. Make your own way to the rear legroom. That is going to come in at 39.3 inches, and this is really is a huge difference between this and the Yaris. Yaris comes in at 34.4 inches, so a huge difference, night and day there. For reference, I'm at even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there, so I was able to fit. This is the best part about the fit, though, let me tell you guys. That second row magic seat is indeed magical. Let me explain. There's a couple different things you can do back here. First thing I wanted to mention is those rear seats do fold up like they would in a pickup truck, essentially. And so once folded up to actually lock those seats in place in that position, there is a black bar you simply just fold down, and that is how you're going to lock it in place, essentially. So if you have a larger dog, a Great Dane or a Mastiff, they might actually be able to fit back there, which is kind of surprising in a car like the fit. It. But that's pretty cool. The Honda Fit is kind of like one of those little clown cars where like a hundred clowns come out of it and you just don't think it's going to happen, but it can do it. So anyways, the other thing I wanted to mention with those magic seats with the Fit is you can go into luxury car mode. I'm going to call it that because it's kind of like that. So if you're the rear passenger and you wanted a leg rest or a foot rest because luxury cars have those leg rests for the rear passengers, you can kind of do that, honestly. So if you push that front passenger seat all the way up, you take off the headrest and then fold it all the way down you can then put down that rear seat after it was folded up in the upright position then fold it back down and essentially that rear passenger on the passenger side of the vehicle can then put their feet up and relax and they have a luxury-esque ride like you would have in a mercedes-benz or a high-end bmw or something like that that is that is absolutely wonderful. I love that the Fit does quirky things like that. But anyways, of course, you have a passenger side seat back map pocket if you wanted to use that as well. But then make your way to the front seats. Manually adjustable cloth seats come with the LX, Sport, and EX trim levels. You will find manually adjustable leather seating that we have today for the EXL, L meaning leather, of course. And that EXL trim level, by the way, does come with heated front seats as well. That button is located just behind the shifter for both driver and passenger. So it's pretty darn cool in a car like the Fit. And I should also mention when it comes to those front seats, you will find some red trim accenting if you were to go with the Sport trim level only. Again, the red theme going on with the Sport, of course. But taking a look now at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the Sport and EXL trim levels. Otherwise, you're going to get that standard urethane steering wheel. Then when it comes to the startup, let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Honda logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock, and again, that button to unlock the rear hatch. But it is actually all a push-button start for the EX and EXL trim levels. I will say the LX and the Sport will not get that. They'll get the turnkey ignition, but we do have that bright red push-button start today, paying homage perhaps to the old Honda S2000, which kind of pioneered the push-button start trend. But so all I'm going to do here is just put my foot on the brake 
and press that engine start button there. It's simple once started up, tachometer is all the way on your left, speedometer is front and center, and you got some useful information on the right as well, including things like how many miles you have left until you hit empty, average miles per gallon, also your oil life meter displayed in percentage terms, letting you know when you need your next oil change. And by the way, additional information on those gauges can be controlled by using the steering wheel mounted up and down arrows located kind of on the backhand side, right side of the steering wheel there. So I probably didn't describe that all that well, but that is how you're gonna be able to search through different information up on those gauges. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality power moonroof. Favorite part about the fit coming with the EX and EXL trim levels. Leather wrap shift knob is gonna come with the Sport and EXL. Once again, you're looking at that right now floor mats coming standard with the EX and EXL. So Honda's pulling a Tesla ordeal with the bottom trim level or bottom trim levels not coming with floor mats, but you of course can get them at Walmart or really anywhere, or Honda of course. Overall indeed, it is a pretty basic, pretty standard setup for the Honda Fit. Just in front of the shifter, you have a 12 volt power outlet USB charging port, and that is how you're gonna hook up for Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. Get more into that in a second. Little bit of storage in front of the shifter, two cup holders in front of the shifter little little bit of storage behind the shifter along with those heated seat buttons as I was mentioning and there are some more hookups actually within the center armrest here there's going to be a 12 volt power outlet and yet another USB charging port as well so I do like all the hookups but again it's pretty basic but at the same time that makes it a lot easier to get used to very quickly in the Honda Fit I will say that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display front and center five inch color LCD screen coming with the LX seven inch color touchscreen display coming with the sport trim leveling up and that's the good one i'll tell you why here bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either setup that you go with but android auto and apple carplay is only going to come standard with the seven inch screen so you're going to need the sport ex or exl trims to get android auto and apple carplay and the reason i love that so much is if you have a smartphone simply hook it up to the honda fit and therefore you have free navigation displayed up on that tech display as well as the ability to like and dislike your pandora songs you can stream youtube music up there and there's a bunch of other compatible apps as well of course, you can also check out your radio settings up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system, you will find four speakers and 160 watts if you were to go with the LX six speakers and 180 watts for all other trim levels, though. So do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Quite honestly, for the amount of speakers, more bass than I expected. Kind of well done there, Honda. More bass than I expected. Clarity is pretty much as expected. It's all pretty much your basic sound system with a little bit more bass than most other six speaker sound systems that I experienced. So we'll give Honda that one. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put the fit in reverse, you will find a rear view camera for all trim levels. You will get dynamic grid lines for the sport trim level and up dynamic, meaning when you turn the wheel, it's going to kind of bend those grid lines showing you what direction that you're going again that is going to be for your sport trim leveling up and that is going to lead us into safety and so to start front side side curtain airbags will come standard in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats also back there rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system will come standard and i will say the cvt setup regardless of which trim level that you go with is going to add honda sensing and so this is important this is a bunch of advanced safety features included in a package but it is going to include a collision mitigation braking system road departure mitigation system adaptive cruise control that's huge it's something you see on luxury cars and much higher up trim levels of other manufacturers lane keep assist forward collision warning and lane departure warning that's a ton of standard safety right there ex and exl trims are also going to add automatic high beams and that Honda lane watch system I've been telling you guys about. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts of what perhaps is the final fit, if you wanted a Honda fit, now is the very last time you can get it if you wanted a new Honda fit at least. It is a fun little car to drive, well above average reliability, so you know it's gonna last 200,000 plus miles like my Civics did. And that is really a huge selling point right there to be honest, it is priced well. I absolutely love the second row magic seat. I love that the back seats can fold up like a pickup truck it makes this thing so much more useful because if it didn't have that in a small car like this it wouldn't be as appealing to a lot of people so that is awesome 
Only other thing I could say as far as final thoughts go, this car pretty much is as expected. I do like it. It's a fun car to drive. Crazy reliability. Honda, bring us the next generation. That's all I got to say. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.